Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 34. Day number 3034. 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 34 of third edition. The problems that, we see, that you see here are the exact same problems uh, that we did when we were going through first and second edition. First and second edition. The first edition is what I'm holding in my hand. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 101 through 103. Even though these two problems that we're about to do today and the two problems that we did yesterday, the two quantitative comparison questions that we did yesterday, 2.4.6 and 7 and 2.4.8 and 9 that we're going to do, they are not in the book. They are bonus problems. The first problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. It's a quantitative comparison question. We're being asked to compare the two quantities. These are called quantitative comparison questions. If you are interested in, in getting some more experience, getting some more uh, practice uh, to get better at these questions, quantitative comparison questions that is, you will find a series, a series of 70 videos, a playlist containing 70 videos titled quantitative comparison questions. Just type in GRE quantitative comparison questions or GRE or simply GRE math day 401 and you will find the first video GRE math day 401 or GRE quantitative comparison day 401 and you will find as I said a series of 70 videos a playlist containing 70 videos where I believe I solved 210 quantitative comparison questions do as many as you can let's work on this one we are, we are asked to compare the sum of the roots of this quadratic equation versus 1 so obviously we have to find the roots let's do this shall we so what can we do here we are looking for two numbers such that the product is negative 380. The product of two numbers has to be negative 380 and two numbers, two magic numbers whose sum has to be equal to negative 1. Can you think of two such numbers? That's the tricky part, isn't it? Well, here's the trick to it. For example, for example, I'm going to, I'm going to digress a little bit here. I'm going to go, go off my notes here. Uh, for example, let me give you a simple example. If somebody asks us, if somebody asks us what are the prime factors, what are all the prime factors, all what are what are all the prime what are all the prime factors prime factors of of let's say of what are all the prime factors of I'm just I'm just making one up here instead say for example something like this. 21 million. Will you be able to recite all the prime factors of 21 million? I need my second hand to finish the sentence. Like that. Like that. Well, there is a trick to it. The trick is this. The trick is very simple. Don't treat the 21 million as a bloody 21 million. Break it up. Break it up into 21 and a million. 21 we know has a prime factor of 3 and a 7. We are done. And a million, a million we simply have to realize is simply 10 raised to 6. Isn't it? And 10 we know has a prime factor of 2 and a 5. There we go. In other words, 21 million can be written as 3 times 7 times 2 raised to 6 times 5 raised to 6. There we go. We are done. The prime factors, all the prime factors of 21 millions are simply 3 times 7 times 2 times 5. Don't, don't worry about arranging them numerically. Just go in the sequence as they appear. 21 is 3 times 7 and 10 is 2 times 5. 3. The prime factors of 21 millions are 3, 7, 2, and 5. 3, 7, 2, and 5. Where we go? 3, 7, 2, and 5. The exact, the exact same trick we're going to apply here. Don't worry about, don't worry about 380. Break up the 380. Forget about the negative sign for the time being. Break it up into 38 and a 10. And let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens, shall we? Because if we deal with 380, it's going to be annoying. 38 is an even number. Let's divide by 2. 2. 3 has 1, 2. 
after we take away three, after we take away two from the three, we have a remainder of one. One goes and joins the eight and becomes eighteen, and eighteen has nine twos. There we go. We're done. Nineteen is a prime number. We're done. We don't have to. We don't need any of this thing. There we go. Now, can you figure out the two numbers such that their sum is negative one? But now it's very obvious. The two numbers are nineteen and two times ten, twenty. Two times ten is twenty, and a nineteen. And we want their sum to be negative one. We want their sum to be negative one, which means we want negative num negative sign to appear with a bigger number, and positive sign to appear with a smaller number. Po negative twenty and a positive nineteen will give us a sum of a negative one, and also negative twenty times positive nineteen will result in a product of negative three eighty. There we go. We're done. We found the factors. Let's continue the process, shall we? So negative 20 and a positive 90, remember that. So x squared minus x, we're going to write that as negative 20x positive and a positive 19x and minus 380 is equal to 380 equals to 0. Okay? What are the common factors between these two terms? The first two terms, the common factor is x. After we take away x, we are left with x minus 20. What is the, I said what are the common factors, that, that was an improper grammar, what I meant to say is what is the common factor. What is the common factor between these two terms? The answer is x. What is the common factor between these two terms? <coughs> the answer is 19, positive 19. After we take away 19 from 19x, we are left with x. And after we take away 19 from 380, 380 divided by 19 is negative 20. Or to be more precise, negative 380 divided by positive 19 is negative 20. There we go, you see? Now we have a common factor of x minus 20 from these two quantities. We're going to take them out as a common factor. x minus 20, and here we have x, here we have positive 19 is equal to 0, which implies that x is equal to positive 20 or negative 19. And what is the question asking? The question was asking us to, to compare in column A Column A was the sum of the roots, wasn't it? Sum of the roots versus column B, which was 1. And what do you know? What do you suppose the sum of the roots is going to be? The first root is positive 20, the second root is negative 19, and their sum is positive 1. What do we have in the second column? A positive 1. The answer here is C. Answer to this problem works out to be C. The, these two quantities are equal because the sum of the root is positive 1. It's exactly what is given in the second column. The sum of the root is exactly what is in the second column. Let's do the next one, shall we? The next one was 2.4.9 and if you have not done it already then as soon as I put it on the blackboard pause the video. Don't wait for me to say it, don't wait for me to remind you. 6x squared plus 19x plus 15 is equal to 0 and we are being, we are being asked to compare the product of the roots versus the sum of the roots. Column A, the product of the roots, versus the sum of the roots. That's your column B. I meant to, I meant to put the other around. Let's see what we can do, shall we? So we have 6x squared plus 19x plus 15. Tell you what, why don't we start from the top here. Just remember, we have been asked to compare the product of the roots. Product of the roots versus the sum of the roots. Let's start from here. So again, we are looking for two numbers whose product has to be, we are looking for two numbers whose product has to equal to, whose product has to equal to the product of these two numbers, 6 and a 15 positive 6 and a positive 16. This product has to equal to 6 times 15. And whose sum 
whose sum has to equal to, we're looking for two numbers, whose sum has to equal to positive 19. Can you think of two such numbers? Can we think of two such numbers? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out what we can do here. We have a 15 here, we have a 15 here, and that's simply 5 times 3. Those are the prime factors of six of, of 15, and we have a 6 here, and the prime factors of 6 are 2 and 3. And we just have to play with it. I think I just found it. I think we just found it. There we go, we just found it. It's going to be 2 times 10, which is 2 times 5, 2 times 5, which is 10, and 3 times 3, which is 9. 10 plus 9 is 19. There we go. So it's going to be 10, 10, and 9. 10 times 9 is this quantity, and 10 plus 9 is 19. How do you know that 10 times 9 is this quantity? Because that's, what this, that's where they're coming from. 6 is 2 times 3, and 15 is 5 times 3. So 2 times 3 times 5 times 3 is same as 2 times 5 times 3 times 3. I think, we, we, I think we, we have our answers. We were looking for product of the roots versus the sum of the roots. So let's finish it up. Okay, let's not take a chance. Let's not take a chance. Let's not make a careless mistake. Let's finish it up. Let's finish it up. 6x is squared. So which one do we write first? The 10x or 9x? The answer is, the correct answer is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So let's write 10x first. 10x plus 9x plus 15 is equal to 0. From these two terms we have common factor of 3x. After we take away 3x here we are left with 2, 2x. After we take away 3x from the 10x, 3x cannot be a common factor of 10x. What the bloody hell is going on? The common factor is going to be 2x, not 3x. What the hell is the matter with me? After we divide 10x by 5x, after we divide 10x by 2x, we are left with 5. And what's the common factor here? The common factor is just going to be 3. After we take away the common factor of 3, we're going to have 3x, because 3, 3 times 3x is 9x, and we have a 5, which is, same as, which is the same quantity here. Because 3 times 5 is going to give us the 15. We have a common factor of 3x plus 5, and 2x plus 3. As you can clearly see, the roots are going to be negative. The both of the roots are going to be negative. If both the roots are negative, I erased it. If the both the roots are negative, the product is going to be positive and their sum is going to be negative. Answer is going to be A. Let's finish it up. So x is going to be negative 5 third and or, not and, or x is going to be negative 3 halves. Now we can finish our work on the top. Column A versus column B. In column A, we are being asked to come. In column A, we had the product of the roots, and in column B, we had the sum of the roots. In column A, we had product of the roots, and in column B, we had the sum of the roots. Since both the roots are negative, since both the roots are negative, the product is going to be positive. What the product is doesn't really matter. We are not interested in that. These are quantitative comparison questions, not computation. These questions are called quantitative comparison, not quantitative computation. Nobody is asking us to compute the product of the two roots. We simply have to realize that the product, whatever the bloody thing is, is got to be positive because it is the product of two negative quantities. The product of two negative quantities is going to be positive. And the sum of those two negative quantities is going to be negative. It's going to remain negative. Therefore, the answer is A. A positive quantity, of course, is going to be more than a negative quantity. Answer to this problem is A. And that was the end of that part. That was the end of that part. In the next video, we'll solve the inequalities that they give us on the same page there, the same page and the following page, the section 2.5. Section 2.5, there are three inequalities that they give us. You can solve those three in the next video. Okay? I know.